things begins to take another turn in the kingdom of science versus the kingdom of well brute force and psychopaths as uh, we see science versus power in a new thing in the Dr. Stone chapter 467 as Senku declares to Hyuga that he is alive and go to tell him that way Kinro uh, is still alive although a little bit wounded so uh, Senku heals his wounds with a uh, asenatline, a fever reducing painkiller, which is actually a byproduct from the all cure they accidentally made. And then he fewer, and then he pulled some sulfur medication into the open wound, and he thinks he Kinro should be completely cured tomorrow, and he is, although a little bit. I mean, he can walk and all, but he's still enduring the pain. After all, Kinro is serious and want to do guards and all that stuff. But Senku says that there's an there they know exact they wonder when the next are gonna attack. But Senku know exactly what they're gonna attack. Elsewhere, the brutes of uh, Sukaza's army are um, frustrated over all of their loss, as um, as as Gen mentions that uh, Senku believe. Here's another example, and just how smart Senku is, because he actually believes that. Uh, uh, they may very well attack during a storm because, uh, 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 or more likely, he thinks Gen will make them understand that. Elsewhere, Hyuga, who just sits down calmly, has says that uh, um, if we're gonna rush in uh, blindly, we will all be slaughtered like moths on a flame. Therefore, we should re regroup with the Sukasa army. However, the brutes just mock him, strangely enough. I mean, I didn't really think they had the courage to mock someone as psychopathic and dangerous as Hugo. But I guess in the end, they are brainless monkeys. And brainless monkeys that have only muscles are quite psychotic. He actually believes that uh, they even points at this hollow spear of something and calls it, uh, uh, calls it a stupid thing. He also wonders that without that spear, Hugo will be nothing. It's actually pretty strange though, because, well, he is kind of scrawny looking Hyuga, but that he has amazing spill. And then, uh, well, Gen touches the spear. Mm. Uh, however, Hyuga says, don't do that if you want to die. And in his mind, we once again see, yes, how sadistic uh, um, Hyuga really is. He mentions something like, uh, mm, they are eager to fight, so if they manage to... Uh, it slaughters some of the villages that will be fine, but if they also die as sacrificial pawns to see just how big of the threat the kingdom science is, that's also fine. So in a way, Hyuga is a sm is a smarter one. He plays his uh, he is like Sukasa. He plays his cards a little bit carefully. He doesn't rely on brute force. Then again, he doesn't really look like a guy that has brute force. But you know what I mean. And uh, also uh, seems that uh, using some different kind of Technolo technology. Senku has managed to give Kinru glasses. <laughs> he actually looks kind of cool in that. Yeah, I have to say that. And uh, Suka, well, she has just a new watermelon cap. Because, well, it's Suka after all. Because she doesn't feel like home. But now they have glasses, so that is prepared. However, now they will all have to work together to do that. The Ishigami village all come together as uh, Q no no Kohaku asks Senku what they're going to do. They're gonna ma make something. So he whispers in old man Kasugi who actually gets so excited he basically strips. Ugh. Um, but then the, a tremendous wind begins to happen and uh, after only three days and uh, the brutes of the Sukasa army says the luck is on their side as they get closer to the bridge uh, and uh, Senku is about to use his weapon, his uh, main fighters all appear and he and in a pretty badass <laughs> picture. I mean, note, they're not dressed like that, really, but they're creating an image like they are. Yes, Kohaku, Gin and Kinro, even Magma, as well as, uh, well, I forgot the father's name, sorry. All wheels, katanas, Japanese swords, <laughs> and when they appear, they, they they create an illusion that they are dressed in like old, you know, 
uh, samurais, which by the way they're not, it's just that, that there's an illusion that they're doing. So Kazuki mm, uh, mentions, uh, uh, and we all see the once upon a time on when uh, Gen asked uh, Senku if he was gonna make katanas. So, we're uh, with a bewitching pattern process born from temperature with the edge, the temper pantrum. They can make Japanese swords, which Kazaki is kind of worn out for making. He says the work may be a bit clumsy, however, against sword like weapons and the skills that the primitive people of Ishigami village has, then of course they can just cut through the brutes no problem. This round definitely goes to the Japanese uh, swords of the science kingdom. But uh, now, um, some, in the end, Senku once again showed that he is very smart. He's using his mind to overcome the brain. And these brutes, well, all except Hyuga and Gen, of course, they are quite brutes. They do not, they don't even think. I'm pretty sure they don't even think. They just do whatever they want and crush whatever <sighs> they feel like it. Part of me actually asks, why the hell would Tsukasa even want to revive idiots like that? But then again, idiots like that seems to have a easy pattern. They follow who is strongest, and Tsukasa, well, he is strongest. So in a way, I guess they are easily manipulated. And Tsukasa wants to have people that he can easily manipulate. After all, he said he had no one precious to him, just fans. And brutes like these would definitely be fans of Tsukasa. Uh, either way, pretty awesome creating Japanese katanas in a primitive world. One wonder what happens next, no idea. But you give me your thoughts if you have any, because I like this chapter.